Anti-vaxxers have overlooked a lot of important data about their champion, the OG vaccine grifter known as Andrew Wakefield. And the 12 children in the original study were handpicked, and this is the study that proved that there was a connection between vaccines and autism in the 90s. And so handpicking uh, your subjects are antithetical to clinical research. Wakefield falsified the results that he received from the pediatricians about those children, and he used something called microscopic level stains when there is a more reliable method, which is the molecular method, which actually uh, further research was done, and that found no connection between vaccines and autism. The parents of those study subjects, some had their own agendas, such as litigation. Uh, they kept changing the timeline of their child's conditions from when the study started and then afterwards when they would talk to press. But the most egregious Wakefield grift was filing for two patents on, singles, on single measles shots while raging against the MMR vaccine. So while he was telling everyone that the well-known vaccine didn't work, he was trying to uh, introduce his own. Q. Mickey Willis. Two decades later, the fellow Austin resident whose propaganda film, Plandemic, fueled the current anti-COVID vaccine fervor, announced last Friday that he's formulating a new supplement with Vlad Vladimir Zelenko, who is the family physician who infamously touted hydroxychloroquine as a miracle cure for COVID in 2020. And there has been a link the New York Times made between him touting it directly to former President Trump. So even though Willis calls the pandemic a plandemic, he's about to start selling a supplement, which, remember, doesn't require FDA approval to steal your body for the next pandemic. Well, that's, good. that's just good planning. That's just good planning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if the, if the verbiage is a little confusing, well, join the party here. But Austin is the grift that keeps on giving. So earlier this week, I noticed that felon, fellow Austinite and friend of Mickey Willis, J. Pierce, J.P. Sears, has identified his latest grift, non-fungible tokens or NFTs. And if you need context for this blockchain-based project, you can revisit our episode 60, where we talk about cryptocurrency, blockchain, and NFTs. So Sears recently cut an hour-long iPhone video talking about cryptocurrency as community building for freedom lovers, and right on cue, his new non-fungible freedom column. Do you love freedom? Do you get annoyed anytime freedoms get eroded away? Me too. Well, I've got a new way you can get in on the freedom movement. But the new way I have for you to join the freedom movement at a deeper level is through my new non-fungible freedom column. What that means is I'm going to periodically publish my perspectives on current events, uncensored, memorialized to the blockchain, and make them available to own, collect, tout, and trade as NFTs by freedom lovers. So, Matthew, can you translate that? <laughs> No, but I'll have to. I'll have to listen to episode sixty again. But no, really, <laughs> me too. You've, you've, you've got to. You've got to help us out here. Well, well, I would like to help, but I really can translate. I'll do my best. JP is going to do what he usually does on video, ship posts on video, except now as shitty artwork and sell it for cryptocurrency. And if I, you think I'm exaggerating, I'm really not. That is the entire grift. He honestly, he's not even trying on this one. Um, even better, the main NFT that he's currently pimping is called Plandemic Four. <laughs> and okay, so a, so this. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You're going to describe it. Yeah, it's 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 a horrible piece of. It looks like something uh, a child would make, which is a lot of NFTs. To be fair, they go for this retro video game look, but it is featuring uh, Bill Gates holding a a, um, a needle, uh, Mark Zuckerberg next to him on a laptop, and then next to him is Joe Biden uh, uh, as a marionette, and then finally uh, Dr. Fauci is across from Bill, leaning back and smiling. Uh, that 
that is what he is selling. Um, and did I, he draw? I've, did he draw it? I did he don't. Draw? I don't know for sure. So there's two NFTs that I'm going to describe in a moment. I don't know who actually drew them. There are ways of just putting photos into uh, programs, uh, which I feel wow. like he might have done on the first one because the first one is just a photo of him saluting. Um, but. I, I watched his videos. I've read his site. I've joined his mailing list about this project. Oh, no. And I went to the Open <laughs> C page, which is where he's selling it, looking for some hook on this project, like a charity he's donating to. You know, Come at on. least, at least, at very least, Mickey is giving the proceeds to his upcoming book to. Well, a, a nonprofit 501c3 dedicated to creating new and healthier educational curriculums for our next generation. So that sounds, that, that sounds yeah. really specific. That but, sounds like but, it has a well formed board of directors. I'm sure the finances are going to be just totally cooked. That's, that's totally that's great. But at the right. very least, he's trying. At the very really? least, he's trying. No, he's just well, better. He, he's just better at it. Well, better. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's true. But that's a step too, too much for JP. So I looked into what he's selling and the first one is just called the J pixel and it originally went up for sale for 17 Ethereum, 17 ETH. So at the time when I first wrote this was, was Tuesday, he was selling it for $58,000. $58,000. Okay. Wait, we, we have to stop here. So, so this is like, like NFTs, it seems to me are like digital art investing or something like that. Is that a, yes. a fair way to say it? Okay. And so, cause got NFT, they've been in the news a lot for like the last couple months and I'm still, I'm not entirely sure, but that's the concept I've gleaned. I'll, I'll give you a bit. I, cause I was working on NFTs three plus years ago when I worked in blockchain. Of course and you were. They are, they were like, think of it like, <laughs> think, I didn't make my own though. Think of it like, um, Farmville, how in Farmville you could spend <laughs> real money to buy a tractor. Right. And people spent tens of thousands of dollars in a video game. So okay. it's just, it's just somebody uh, earlier this year, someone paid 500,000 real dollars for a virtual house. Okay. You know, and then famously Beeple sold his artwork for 59 million or whatever it went for. So he, that's when the NFT craze broke. The non-fungible part is that uh, it's unique in some way. It could be copy pasted. It could be duplicated in some way, but it has some sort of digital signature attached to it. That means that it is original. It has some originality. It's an attempt at creating originality in a copy paste world, right? Exactly. And so right. Jack Dorsey famously sold his first tweet as an NFT, which was the first tweet ever on Twitter. So when you get the, so when you get that thing, so when you get the NFT, let's say I bought Jack Dorsey's tweet. Um, I, there are screen, screenshots of that tweet everywhere. Uh, what lets me show my friends that I have the original or the one that Jack says is original or the one that's signed by Jack? It's a, it is a signature kind of? It, you can call it a signature. So even right now, if you go to the Bitcoin blockchain, if you go to a tracker, you can see all of the Bitcoin activity. Now, your proof is a 17 to 33 or whatever it is, number letter combo that is that is your proof. And that's how you see all the transactions. Um, so it's just that you basically, you can go back to the very first ever Bitcoin transaction and you can publicly view every single Bitcoin transaction that has ever happened. Right. You can't tell if you don't know someone's wallet number, though, you're not going to know whose it is, but there are ways of making it known. You can show your proof through that digital signature effectively. Okay. All right. So this week in, in almost impossible to penetrate digital crazes. <laughs> it's just, it's like, so so you know, he, 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 let's just roll this back because we're talking about JP Sears yes. selling his memes, his shitty memes yes. as pieces of uh, like eternal art in cyberspace. That, yes. that, that he's basically saying this is a good investment. You should buy this, right? Because it's a it's an original piece of me. Yes. Right. So, okay. well, no, no, Matthew, I, I thought, okay, I thought I made this clear. <laughs> It's about freedom. It's about freedom get, and loving freedom. So it's not about annoyed. JP. I get so annoyed at anything <laughs> that disrupts my freedom.
On Tuesday, it was for sale. So think of it like eBay. You can bid on it or you can just buy it outright at a certain price. Right. So it was on sale for $58,000. Right now, you can purchase it for the bargain basement price of 3.6 ETH or $12,700 at the moment. The highest bid on the page is 0.11 ETH, $380. Oh, so he dropped the price from 58 to 12? Yes. 17 to 3.6. He, he, yes. he dropped the eBay buy now price. See, I get eBay because I'm a lot closer <laughs> to, to, to boomers than, than JP is, I guess. But 